Hello, everybody. This is August the 15th. Fairly decent day. I have another message for you. I want, before we start, for you to ask yourself what defiles a person. A lot of times we, we, we put a lot of effort in keeping ourselves clean, our hands washed, our hair cut and groomed. All these things we do where on the outside we will be maybe not perfect, but as close as we can get. Our clothes clean. Sometimes it worries us when we get a spot on our shirt. But this is important for us to keep clean and, and to look decent. But back in the time of Jesus, the Pharisees and many of the Jews worried about what defiled them. And a lot of times they were thinking that things on the outside of them could defile them. They had all of these rigid laws these rigid dietary laws. They didn't eat this. They could eat this. They had a long list of foods that they could eat or not eat. And today we call that being kosher. You go to some of the larger supermarkets and you'll find several shelves of kosher food. Especially with the Orthodox Jews, they still practice this idea of eating the right things in order to be clean, to be not defiled. All of this came about in the history of the Jews. We can read about it in the Old Testament in Leviticus. They had started saying you don't eat certain kinds of meat. It would not certainly not be kosher, and it would not be nice if you handed a Jew a jar of pickled pig feet. That would just really upset them. But Jesus, if we if we really think about it in his ministry, he, he was a Jew, but they were all the time getting on to him because he broke laws. He broke certain laws that were supposed to be kept if you were a practicing Jew. So we, we have to ask the question, was Jew... Or was Jesus a practicing Jew? Was he kosher? So the scriptures today that come from Matthew 15th chapter, beginning with verse 10. And he called, this is the 10th verse, and he called the people to hear him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person. But what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. Verse 12, Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? Well, certainly they were offended. He was hitting them straight in the heart of what they felt like they should do as Jews that they should be very careful what they put in their mouth. And a lot of them that were careful with that, even today, bad things come out of their mouth, which means that they have an impure heart. The purity of the heart, according to this teaching, is what really matters. Verse 13, Jesus answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Not all the Pharisees and Jews came under the scrutiny of Jesus, but he certainly could determine when one of them were teaching the wrong thing and leading people astray. They were like plants, or God had certainly called them, that they were first called uh, into the kingdom. But a lot of them did 
a terrible thing when they did bad teaching, and he felt like this was one of them. So not only the blind, not only the blind that teach the wrong things will fall into the pit, but the people that they affect, the people that they are teaching, it could be to their demise if they follow these blind that are leading the blind. In verse 15, but Peter said to him, explain the parable to us. Of course, this was not a long parable. A lot of times we say a parable is a story. This is not a story, but you can use when you define what a parable is. Sometimes Jesus had these small, these very small, very short sayings that were so deep that taught things so deeply to us. And Jesus says, and he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? Verse 18, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. So Jesus was getting this right on from the heart what kind of shape with our heart is in how we love people or not love people how we are envious of people or maybe when we're not envious of people all of these things arise in the heart not the physical heart that pumps blood for our body's use, but the spiritual heart, that central part of us, that central part of who we really are, that place where God lives, that place where God created us. He, he created us, formed us from the inside out. It's, it's like in our genetics, those little genes, chromosomes, determine how big we are, what color we are, short or tall. All of that stuff from the inside out. And then that part of us, as we're formed and we live our life, that part of us that makes us who we are. And if that is defiled, everybody knows it because they hear us talk. They know what we say. We, we run our mouth. We talk about people. We gossip. We're all the time getting into things and saying things when we really should just not say anything because it, it tells others who we really are wasting our time with talk that is not appropriate instead of lifting people up, tearing people down. These can make us rotten. And when Jesus encountered a lot of the Pharisees and the scribes and the other, some of the other Jews, he could tell from the way they talked to each other and to him just how pure they were. Jesus calls us to be pure. We go to slip every once in a while. Sometimes you might hit your finger with a, hit your thumb with a hammer. You might say a little something, but the main thing is if we're bitter with each other, if we slander each other, if we lie about each other, there are so many good things to talk about but a lot of people get caught up in this talking nasty, 
telling jokes, telling bad jokes, a little simple funny story, that may be okay, but still we're, don't we have better things to talk about? And, and like I said, anybody, once they hear us talking, can tell who we really are and what we really are. You meet a stranger, you go somewhere, and you meet somebody, and just looking at the outside of them, they might be well-dressed, they might be handsome or beautiful, they might have their hair just right, they may be showing that outward look of even being holy. I mean, we, we go to church on Sunday. We try to look our, our best. We like to dress up. We like to sit there and sing the beautiful hymns. And we and the ones that's watching them and listening to them sing, they said, oh, this is a righteous person. This is a really Christian person. But then when church is over, you get back out into the world, you go to work or you go to school or even you talk in your family. You can be so unclean. You can be so nasty and bitter. We condemn each other. We talk about each other. We don't have anything good to say about each other. And we've just wiped out that, that Sunday of being pious. All of us make that mistake, and we should be careful. So Jesus is teaching us that it's not what we eat. It's not even sometimes our habits like tobacco. A lot of us have tobacco habits. It's not anything on the outside of us that's coming into us that make us impure, that make us not righteous. It, it, it's not the outside, it's the inside. Now, a lot of these things that we do over the course of our life, we build these things up, we make these bad habits. And, and, it, and it's about the, the heart and the ego. We get around somebody and we think we're the we're better than they are. We even sometimes want to have control over people and some of the lower status people. We, we treat them not with dignity. We treat them not understanding that all are children of God. All have potential to be children of God and to change. And we cannot do anything about encouraging that change. That's, that's how we really, other than reading scriptures or telling people about scriptures, sometimes we can tell the gospel by keeping our language right, by being an example to other people, showing them that we truly are children of God. So bear this in mind in the coming days. I, I, I know I have done it. I, I, I admit I've said things to people that, that was not good. I've criticized people about them being so bad when I shouldn't have. So let's pray. God, forgive us when we show to others in our actions and our speech something different from the way you want us to be. You created us to be humble. You created us to speak with, treat people with dignity and to talk to them with nice words, always lifting them up thinking about things that's good, about things that's righteous. Forgive us when we haven't do, did that. And so today we come to you and we proclaim to you that we're going to do better. We're going to truly be the people that you have called us to be. 
We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.